This is Strictly Politics, and now I'm being joined by first uh, Barrister Abubakar Yusufu, who is the Chairman, League of Patriotic Lawyers. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. We also have um, a member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Jimo, Jide Jimo. Thank you very much. He's also the Chairman of the House Committee on Urban Development. Thank you very Please much. Welcome to the show. Thank Today is Nigeria's Independence Anniversary, and I'm, I'm sure that um, we can't deny the fact that uh, this is an event that we cannot just uh, pretend that it's not happening. And, uh, what does it mean to you? Uh, let me start with uh, uh, Barrister Yusuf. Very well. Uh, I think it's a misback. It's actually a misback. The method that uh, we've been able to hold on to the Federation delicately, though, is, uh, is a blessing, so to speak, despite all the, you know, that thrown as uh, unity from the Civil War, from the coup, counter coup, and all that. And uh, it's also uh, distressing that uh, we have witnessed the, the climb or the, 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 the height of a nation to to enviable height and the gradual fall of a beleaguered nation. So I say it's a misbag, misbag of person. Okay, uh, Honorable Jiri Jimo, you are a politician. And um, perhaps the politicians are probably the, the biggest beneficiaries of all of the struggles over the last 60 years because we now have <laughs> democracy and then and then you are the people who determine the direction that we go to as a nation. First, thank you very much. First and foremost, I have to give thanks to Almighty God. The ruler of heaven and the earth has given me the opportunity to serve our people from Lagos, Milan to Nigeria as a whole. I've just said something now that uh, the politicians are the major beneficiaries. I want to say a point of correction. The people are the major beneficiaries. Without the people, there cannot be politicians. You cannot be in any position without being elected to that position. And the position you have been elected is to, for you to go and serve your people. people. And service is humanity. That's one. Two, on the issue of Independence Day, I think it's a remarkable one. We should give thanks to God for us to have still be alive. So many number of people have gone, even though they started together with pre-colonial period. But some of them are not alive again. Some of us are here. Some of them are here. And it's remarkable. We should thank God for that, okay. for the life of our okay. people. That's good. Now, the president had the traditional Independence Day uh, speech. Um, I, I would believe that you listened to, to the president. Uh, did it meet your expectations? Well, I would say, as usual, as is uh, customary to every you know, speech we've had, even for the uh, inception, you know, it, it was very robust in uh, semantics, but very thin in substance, so to say. It's robust in grandiloquency and semantics, but uh, I would say it was, uh, you know, very thin, I'll repeat it, at the risk of being repetitive in how... Some people also didn't like the fact that the president was making the comparison, yeah. uh, particularly with regards to the, the, the recent increase in the pump price of petrol and saying that some neighboring countries and even Saudi Arabia uh, sell pump price of petrol for much higher than Nigeria. Some people feel that uh, that comparison is actually misplaced. Well, well I think is everybody is entitled to his or own opinion. Mr. President has spoken and he addressed the entire country as co patriots and uh, he actually alluded to so many reasons. We are, I will want to point uh, uh, a kind of uh, pointer to the president when he was mentioning that the military rule truncated certain period of time within the, the period of the war. He should have mentioned his name as one of them and made, and, and at the same time, make an apology for what. Has happened. This intervention at exactly, that time as well. exactly. Mm -hmm. That would have been a very meaningful and purposeful speech. I won't say that. I want to say that for what he has said today, I think he has addressed the issue. Okay. So okay. we are okay. we okay. think we, is, we need to can. correct. We still yeah, have there to were, correct. There were quite a number of Nigerians okay. who decided today to protest and to 
speak up on the things that they are not satisfied with. One yeah. such group is the Revolution Now group. And yeah. we heard about arrests here and there, although later this evening we also heard that uh, some people have been, have been released. Yeah. Uh, uh, does it uh, speak well yeah. uh, at a time like this in, in our lives as a nation? Let me quickly to, just, uh, you know, with due respect to my, you know, honorable, yeah. that uh, the speech today addressed some germane, you know, things. I don't totally agree with that because, uh, firstly, the timing is uh, ill-timed. At the time we are just coming out of uh, uh, COVID, this is not the best time to justify, you know, the increase in petroleum products and even make comparison to great countries that have palliatives. The, the president would have been uh, uh, taken more seriously if he had perhaps quoted the minimum wage, you know, of uh, the, the average man in Nigeria how we live before making or drawing a comparison with uh, those uh, countries, especially Saudi Arabia he mentioned. What is the average uh, minimum wage of the man in Saudi Arabia? Indeed, the man in Nigeria is living a, a kind of a very despondent al majiri life, the average Nigeria. <laughs> so it does not make any, any uh, meaningful sense to compare you know, the okay. petroleum well, products uh, okay. that operate in other countries okay. without taking into cognizance the, the, know, the living conditions yeah. and, the, then, and the other things, you know, that, 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 that makes sense. So, yes, yeah. so, so, I mean, yeah. let's quickly look at that. Uh, uh, in a few of the locations where these uh, protests, you know, yeah. took place, people were, uh, as a matter of fact, I think it was in, uh, in Ekiti, sorry, in Oshu, yeah. you know, they were dispersed in the morning, uh, but we heard that they eventually converged somewhere else and still went ahead with the protest. But in a few other places, they were actually arrested yes. and some people were released much later in the day. Yes. Uh, is it, is it, can we say it, it tells well of Nigeria to try to stop people from hearing their views? He just yes. said earlier on that, I mean, everybody can, can hear, hear their view, just the way the president has, has given a speech. Well, I want to believe that the security operatives they are times very overzealous in carrying out their statutory functions. Uh, what they do, you know, you know, what they sometimes do, so to say, is tantamount to demarketing the president and his policy. Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand? The, the right to protest and demonstrate is enshrined in our constitution, and uh, the courts have acted on it. Even the right of Mr. President to demonstrate when he was in the opposition as, uh, as, uh, as piloted by, you know, by Mr. Femi Fallon, a senior advocate of Nigeria. It was very clear that you do not even need police permit to engage in protest and demonstration. If the police are co coming in, they are coming in to protect the, the protesters or protesters so that the area boys kind of do not take over. Take over. Okay. Yeah. Is, is, let me just say this. Okay, go ahead. Protest is part of democracy yeah. and it's constitutional, but it must be peaceful. Yeah. Protest should not transmit to mimic to violence and violence. Yeah. It shouldn't be toggly like. Okay. And we should be careful. Anytime we want to make protest, I mean, you can make it peacefully. Balance, you know, like you exactly. said, people are Very coming out to protest. Exactly. Some people, uh, the, 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 the intention of, intentions of some people might be different I from the absolutely. original people that wanted to make protest in the first place. In the first place. Okay, That's let's, it. Let's, let's move on. Um, quickly, the issue, um, just yesterday, the, the Federal Executive Council approved the 13 trillion era. Uh, about eight. Uh, you are in the National Assembly and you, you, you have access to probably much more information than we do. Uh, does this look like it will help to stabilize the economy from what all of the challenges that we have had this year? I hope so. I hope so. Considering the fact that we are in the COVID-19 period, and there is need for us to embark on what we call palliative. There's need for us to improve much more on, on infrastructural development. There is need for us to improve much more on our software to make growth develop in this country. And I think by the time this thing comes to the National Assembly, after the presentation, I'll be able to make my position known. Uh, and useful. And One time. of the things that people always complain about budgets in Nigeria is actual execution. Exactly. We have, we have had back and forth ministries, departments, and agencies complain about disbursements. Right. And then once in a while, the president intervenes and says he's directing the Minister of Finance to release funds. I'm, I'm wondering if that's supposed to be a law, 
because it's, a, it's first a bill and then signed into law. Why do you need the president to give a directive for release of funds for something which is that's supposed to be law, yeah. uh, Mr. Yusufu? That's where we come, that's what we talk about. Uh, difference between, you know, theorizing, grand theorizing and raw empiricism. Most <laughs> of this budgetary, you know, budgetary thing we talk about, they are more in the theoretical realm. When it comes to uh, practice, you will discover that uh, there's uh, That's a lot of departure. politics that goes into yeah. it. And uh, again, you don't really need to, you know, blame uh, the government. At times, things like, uh, you know, downturn of the economy, like what we've had now, COVID and all that. So more often than not, the the place there, Budget, uh, budget projections on uh, proposal and uh, imaginations. So that is just, uh, you know, a, is it, a even the, 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 the budget act itself has a force of law. Exactly. If it has been passed by the National Assembly and assented to by the president or governor at which were, it has become a law. Yeah. And it has the power of force. Power of force in the sense that it's not to shoot people, but to ensure that you follow in total, what is it? But there might be problems along the line, which might be climate condition, natural condition, and so on and so on, which is understandable. By the time you put that into consideration, you can sit down, think together, and take a position. Some people have also raised concerns about this particular proposal. Yeah. It has about four trillion naira deficit already. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's like laying the ground for Different. more borrowing yeah. going forward. Yeah, like does, this, does it bother you? Yeah, like the Honorable said that it's backed you know, by law. I would say that any law that has no sanction is not a good law. Any law that when you breach sin, you cannot be punished effectively. It's not a law properly so called. Nobody has been taken to, you know, the security operators for breaching, you know, a past budget and all that. So I would say that uh, that is not necessarily, you know, a very effective law that can check, check its abuse or lack of adherence. So when we have a law, you know, we should be able to have sanctions for a breach thereof. Okay. Since there's no breach thereof, I would say that type of law should be taken. But you uh, mentioned deficit. It, it, yes. it has to go through the borrowing. Exactly. There's no way you can fund a budget of this nature without borrowing. Without borrowing. So that but means... you have to make sure you borrow for capital development. Yes. Don't borrow for, for recurrent. recurrent. For if you borrow for recurrent, you are done. You are finished. <laughs> okay. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll be talking with um, Baris Abubakar Yusufu and, of course, um, Honorable Jide Jimo, a member of the House of Representatives. So we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Uh, to look at other issues, we'll still stay with the National Assembly. Don't go anywhere.